Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Islam the Way of Life here on Ikra Bangla. I'm your host, Abul Hasnat. I hope you've been well and enjoying yourselves, and I hope you've enjoyed our last few episodes. I've uh, got some new, well, got some returning guests and a new guest. But before we introduce anyone, let's have some Quranic recitation. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي جعل في السماء وجعل فيها سراجا وجعل فيها سراجا وقمرا منيرا وهو الذي جعل الليل والنهار خلفة لمن أراد أن يذكر لمن أراد أن يذكر أو أراد شكورا وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما والذين يبيتون لربهم سجدا وقياما والذين يقولون ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما إنها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما صدق الله العظيم صدق الله العلي العظيم الحمد لله that's an amazing recitation as we always get in every one of our episodes right um, I've introduced myself Abu Hasnat I'm really happy to see you come back across the bottom of the screen will be our email and our WhatsApp number please as we always say send in your comments send in your views send in some of your good deed videos because we love showing the good deed videos right let me ask my returning guests to introduce themselves. So, young lady on the far side, when you're ready, please do salam to everyone and tell them your name and your age. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Kyra and I am nine years old. Thank you very much. Welcome back, Kyra. Kyra is one of our returning guests. Young lady in the middle, when you are ready. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Khadija and I am eight years old. Welcome back to you, Khadija. Wa alaikum salam. And my new guests here, if you can do salam to everyone, tell them your name and your age. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Zia and I am seven years old. Thank you, Kyra, Khadija, and Zia. It's very good to have them, and I'm sure you are happy to see my returning guests as well our new guests. Right. So today we are going to go through our regular. Um, agenda, well, I call it agenda, this is not a meeting, it's a fun time together, so the regular things that we do. So we're going to go through what we've been doing recently is some of our Quran challenge questions and then after that inshallah we will be looking at some quotes again and we'll be talking about these quotes, then we'll give you an opportunity to see a good deed video, it might be your one that you sent in, it might be one that I've done. Um, it might be one that our regular guests have done, but we'll have a good DVD for you. And then we're going to finish up with a game. And these um, guests of mine have chosen this game today. So I'm looking forward to playing this uh, later on the episode. Um, so right, if I um, go anywhere else, I'm going to grab these cards and come over. So guys, you ready for this?
I'm going to ask you these Quran questions and you have to work together to find the answer. Okay? And you guys at home, join in. See how many of these you can get. Yeah, see how many you can get before I even start giving clues to the answer. Um, and maybe challenge each other at home. So, okay, I'm going to go with, ooh, the very first card on my hand. It seems like quite a difficult question, but let's try this one. So, which prophet was sent by Allah to the Ashabul Akiyah, which is the people of the wood? It's quite a hard one, but you might have heard your parents talk about it to you at home. You might have heard your imam or your stad okay. or your um, teacher. Which prophet do you think was sent by Allah to the people of the wood? Prophet Ibrahim. Khadija thinks it's Prophet Ibrahim. Do you guys agree? Would that be your final answer? Zia, what do you think? Yes. Khadija, um, Kairon? It's a very hard one, I have to say. I don't know. Okay. Did you guys guess it at home? The correct answer is the Prophet Shu'aib. Really hard. That was hard. So Prophet Shu'ay was sent to the people of the wood. Ashabul, um, Ashab al -Akhya. Okay, let's go for a little easier one. That's not actually easy. I said easier, and I've just looked at a question. It's a pretty tough one as well. Who did the ancient Jews, or who did the ancient Jew call the Son of God? Prophet Musa. Do you think the ancient Jews called Prophet Musa the, um, the Son of God? It's a very hard one, actually. And I didn't know this answer, I've just known it now. Do you guys know at home? Right, I'm going to give you this answer because it's very hard. It's Uzair. A person by the name of Uzair, the Jews used to call... Um, the Jews used to call the Son of God. Right. Okay, let's try a geographical question, a geography question, okay? Hopefully this is an easy one because it would be um, one of two answers, but... During Hajj, there is a place called Mina that everyone goes to. During Hajj, there's a place called Mina. Where is Mina? Or where is it close to? Which of the big cities is it close to? Medina. Medina is a, a good guess. What do you think? Mecca. Mecca. What do you Mecca. think? Mecca. Mecca. What do you guys at home think? Could it be Medina? Could it be Mecca? Correct answer is it's a small town three miles from Makkah, where pilgrims stay for three nights and three days during Hajj. Okay, right. Uh, I'm hoping to find an easier question, so let's try this one. Okay, back to a question about prophets. Let's see who can say this one quickly. Okay, which prophet was swallowed by a big fish? Prophet Yunus. Oh. Khadija beat everyone. Did you guys beat Khadija or was she the first one? Let's just double check. Yes, it was the Prophet Yunus. Well done. Okay, this is a hard one. Unless you know the story from Sulaiman Ali Salam. What was the name of the Queen of Saba? Or, in, or in, in the Bible, they call the Queen of Sheba. What was the name of the Queen of Saba or the Queen of Sheba? Hard again, isn't it? Her name was Bilkis. Okay. Last of these quite difficult questions, but maybe you'd get this one. Where did the man who bought Prophet Yusuf take him to? So which country did the man who bought Prophet Yusuf take him to? Egypt. You think it's Egypt? Where do you think? Egypt. Egypt? Egypt. You want to go with Egypt? What do you guys think at home? Egypt or Birmingham? Egypt. Yeah, it was Egypt. Well done. That was a good one. Okay. Um, let's do one more question on profits. Let's have a look. Here you go. Which prophet was the son of Prophet Zakaria? Which prophet was the son of Prophet Zakaria. Yahya. You think it's Yahya? What do you think, Zia? I don't know. You don't know. Okay, Kaira. Do you agree with Khadija? Could it be Yahya or could it be someone else? I don't know. 
What do you guys think at home? Do you think Khadija's right? Khadija, do you really strongly think you're right? Or was it a guess? Guess. Okay, Khadija says guess. Well, guess what? You're right. Oh. <laughs> well done, mashallah. Right. We've had, um, we've had a good spell on, on these Quran challenge questions, but these are really good questions. Um, I want to talk about, let's go back to one of our questions. I want to talk about the Prophet, um, Prophet Yusuf's story. Do you guys know the story of Prophet Yusuf? No? Do you know the story? Yeah. Um, Tell us the story. Tell everybody uh, the story the way you remember it and the way you know about it. So as much had, of it as you want. He had 11 brothers. Very and good. He, those brothers were jealous except one. And so they one day they, they decided to take take Prophet Yusuf outside and they begged their dad to take him because like, cause they wanted to slaughter him, like do something to him. But they pretended to their dad that they were actually going to look after him but so when they took him outside they took his shirt off and they put blood on it and then he threw him they threw him in a whale and then people some people walked past and took him out of the well because they wanted to get water from the well and then they they took him to egypt and made him a slave very good wow that's very good mashallah Kaira. that's a beautiful narration of the story Kaira, what do you learn from the story of Prophet Yusuf, what do you th what, what does it teach you every time you hear the story? To not have jealousy. Very good. What do you guys think? Is that a good thing? Do you think jealousy is a good thing? No, it's quite bad, isn't it? It's amazing the story of um, Prophet Yusuf, and hopefully you guys, are, when you go to your madrasas and you talk to your teachers about it, um, you find out that yeah, jealousy did affect the brothers of Prophet Yusuf, and that's why they put Prophet Yusuf into that situation. And they took his shirt and returned it to his dad to make it sound like Prophet Yusuf had died. And they only did that through jealousy. Um, but Subhanallah, when you when you when you hear the commentary and the tafsirs on it, um, you'll hear that later on that you say that the, the brothers still later on they regretted what they did, and they regretted what they did, and and they saw the sadness in their dad, and that's why. Allah never refers to them in the Qur'an as criminals or bad people. The brothers of Prophet Yusuf were not called Mujrimin because they were not criminals. They just made mis a, a huge mistake and that's what happens. Jealousy is a tool of the shaitan that can make you do these mistakes. So thank you very much for that, Kara. That was a really good narration. Right, something I should have done a bit sooner, but I can do it now. My guests have got some amazing recitation as, as these young people do attend Madrasa, like you guys do as well, and I'd like them to give us some, um, <coughs> give us some Quranic recitation to just show how much they're practicing. So, Kaira, will you be happy to go first? Yeah, what surah are you going to do for us? Humaza. Surah Humaza, inshallah. So, Kaira, when you're ready, if you can look into the camera, chest nice and big so you get lots of air into your body, and, and as loud as you can, please recite for us Surah Humaza. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويل لكل همزة لمزة الذي جمع ماله وعدده يحسب أن ماله أخلد كلا لينبذن في الهتمة وما أدراك ما الهتمة نار الله الموقدة التي تطلع على الأفئدة إنها عليهم مؤصلة في عمد ممدد MashaAllah, Mamtaz, Tabarakallah, that's very good. Well done, Kaira. Um, and Humaza of the short surahs is one of the longer ones. How many ayahs does it have, Kaira? Nine. Nine ayahs, wow. So it is one of the harder of the short surahs. So well done, Kaira. That's very brave of you. Khadija, could, would you be able to do a recitation for us? Yes. Which one can you do for us? Surah Kawthar. Surah Kawthar. Thank you very much, Khadija. When you're ready, please recite. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطينا كل كوسر وصل للربك ونهار إن الشاني أتى هو الأبتر ما شاء الله ما متأسف تبارك الله and إن أعطينا how many ayahs does it have do you know three three very good it's one of the shortest or probably the shortest surah in the Quran with three ayahs but it has 
And please sit down, mums and dads, or sit with your mums and hear the tafsir. It has an amazing tafsir. It's amazing to know um, the purpose behind Surah Kawthar and when it was revealed, at what time and what point in life for the Prophet and what it promises the Prophet. Allah makes so many promises in the Quran and Surah Kawthar is a promise that Allah has made to Prophet Sallallahu So I'm not going to go into it. Inshallah, I want you guys to spend time doing that at home with your ustads um, at madrasa or with mums and dads at home or older siblings, inshallah. Right, um, before we do the game, before we do the game, I want to do what we've been doing recently, Ramadan Mubarak, the book by Tariq Hussain, where he's got so many quotes in here. So I'm going to spend this time, because I haven't heard much from Zia, so she's going to, I'm going to read one of these quotes and I would like them all to tell me how they feel, but... I'm going to start with Zia, you Zia, okay? So today I have decided to look at, it's a quote, it's a fasting quote. So, the quote in, uh, in the first few pages here, this quote is as follows. Fasting had always been a means of purification for all souls who longed for divine guidance. And this quote is from a lady called Aisha Rafia. So a lady called Aisha Rafia said this quote, and I'll repeat it again to you. Fasting had always been a means of purification for all souls who longed for divine guidance. Some very complicated words used there. But let me ask you, Zia, did you understand what that means? Uh, no. Did you understand it, Kyra? Well, I think, was it like when you fast, you emit? It cleans you and you get more patience. Very good. That's, a, that's one way of looking at it, yeah. Let me break this down for you. So, fasting had always been a means of purification, which means fasting is a way to purify yourself, to clean yourself. Okay? But then it says, for all souls. So you might think, well, how is fasting going to clean me? A bath or a shower cleans me. But then this says, for souls of fasting, cleans your soul and then it also says and it's for the souls who longed for divine guidance do you guys know what divine guidance means divine guidance divine is something that comes from Allah and Allah gives us guidance so what Aisha Rafi is probably saying here is that fasting is a way to get your soul to be clean and to be guided by Allah now when you hear something like that how do you feel what do you think, Zia? Is fasting... Do you think that, that that quote is telling us that fasting is a way to make, way to go and get some help from Allah? Yes. Yeah? What do you think, Khadija? Yes. Kyra, expand. Tell us more. At the end part where it says, like, guidance. Divine guidance, yeah. yeah. I think it means also when you fast, it gives, like, it shows you the right path. It gives you guidance. Very good. Yes. So, fasting spiritually for your soul helps you because it guides you to the right way or guides you to the way of Allah to the divine guidance so it's a very nice quote there um, so right thank you for going over those uh, going through that quote with us we've got a few quite a few minutes to play a game and so these guys have chosen the game quick links so I want, you, uh, I want you guys at home, we've played this before, but if you haven't seen our previous episode where we played this, this is a game where everyone takes a squeaker and we're going to put words across the table and then I'm going to pick up a subject card and I'm going to ask these guys to pick the subject card and explain why the word is related to that subject card, I mean to that description. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold these cards up here, which which hold which which have the nouns, and then these orange cards here have the adjectives, the describing word. So I'm gonna put these down. No, these guys can't see them because I've got them hidden by the box. But I'm gonna give them a chance to then come. I'm gonna give them a chance to actually come across and choose. Not come across, but I'll actually get them to choose which of these description words matches the matches the noun that we have here. So I'm going to ask you not to turn this over, but take one each. You take this one. Khadija, you take that one. And Kyra, you take that one. Now, let me grab a squeaky, a squeaky as well. So 
Once you pick your card, you have to explain why your word is related to the one that's here on the table. So, let's go with you first, Kyra. Do you want, when you're ready, turn your card over. What does it say? Castle. Castle. Oh, we've had this one before. Castle. Now, I'm going to go through description words. You have to tell me which one, or if you can step over, and I want you to pin which description goes with castle. So, when you're ready, see, can, you, can you see these ones? Yeah. Right, I've got here elegant, bendable, dry, resistant, bright, noisy, natural, portable, reflective, desired, pointy, and curry. Which one do you think should go with castle? Bright. You think goes with bright. So you're going to now pin bright and sit down with it. When you're ready. Now, you're going to explain to us why castle and bright goes together. If us three agree with her and think she's picked the right card, we say nothing, we say well done. If we think she's wrong, we're going to squeak her. Okay. So Khadija has, um, Kyra, sorry, has picked castle and bright. Kyra, why have you said castle is bright? Because castle has different colours and the colours are bright. So castle has front colours? Different. Different colours and you think it is bright. Do you guys agree? I think castles are quite dull, don't you? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Sorry, Kyra, you lost that one. Okay, your turn, Khadija. What card do you have? Car. Car. Right. Do you choose desired, pointy, curry, natural, portable, reflective, noisy, resistant, dry, bendable, or elegant? Noisy. You want to go with noisy. Okay, when you're ready, hit the noisy. There we go. Now sit down. And explain to us why is car noisy? Because sometimes when people are around the car, it's like when it's driving, um, it makes a lot of noise. And also when you're inside, you can hear like the wheels go fast. Do we agree with that? Is the car's noisy? Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. What if it was an electric car? No. It won't be noisy, would it? But we'll let you have that. Because most cars are not electric. Even though we're slowly going to a time when most cars will be. So, well done, Khadija. Right. You ready, Zia? What card do you have? Sweet. Sweets. Choose which one. Desired, pointy, curry, natural, portable, reflective, resistant, dry, bendable, elegant. Oh, that's very hard. What does sweets fall into? Oh, have you squeaked her already? <laughs> you think sweets are... Natural. Natural. Okay, now you have to sit down and explain to us how are sweets natural? Sweets are natural because it's food. Because it's food. Do we agree that our sweets natural? I think we have to squeak your way because sweets are manufactured. But what is sweet and natural? Guys, who can answer that question? What is sweet and natural? It's a trick question or an easy question. What is sweet and natural? Do you guys at home know what is sweet and natural? I'd say sugar. Isn't sugar natural? Or maybe it's refined. Let's say fruits. Because fruits have their own natural sugar. Apples have their own sugar. Strawberries are amazing. They have natural sugar. My gosh, we've run out of time. That's all we have time for. Alhamdulillah. So I hope... Have you guys enjoyed yourself in this quick little game? I know we don't get much time of it, but you get a taste that. You're going to go and try this game at home at some point? Yeah? It's good fun. Hope you guys at home as well try this out and do try out some of the um, quotes um, yourself, discuss the quotes and do try a Quran challenge at home. Give yourself some challenges at home and play with your siblings and see how you get on and hopefully send us some good deed videos. We love watching them. That's all I've got time for. I, we've got to get going so inshallah we hope to see you, uh, see you soon. I've been your host Abul Hasnad. Until next time, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.